Good evening, and welcome to Sportshire. I'm your host, Griff McClellan, and today our guests feature Seth Linfield, head of Long Trail School, Ben Park, Bryce Coe, and Blake Allen. Today, we will be discussing um, offense versus defense in sports. This topic has been discussed by many over the years, and over the past month, we've seen some incredible action that involves this topic, and that's what we will be discussing today. I will start off by asking Seth a question. Um, so, this month, we watched an incredible game, the national championship, Alabama versus Georgia. That was one of the craziest and most exciting games I've ever watched. What are your thoughts on that game? Well, that's a game that not only was it one for the ages, uh, but both teams, just like in the Super Bowl, have incredible offenses and incredible defenses. In fact, this upcoming Super Bowl is the first Super Bowl in 40 years where both the offenses and defenses are in the top five. Uh, I got to imagine that that's the case as well with Alabama and Georgia. Look at Alabama. They had a freshman quarterback uh, who came in to relieve a sophomore quarterback. Uh, and yes, it's a great story, big decision by Nick Saban uh, to make that change at halftime. But Alabama is in that game because of its defense against a really strong offense that Georgia has, uh, where you have two running backs on Georgia that are going to be playing on Sundays. Alabama's defense kept him on the game and gave Saban a chance to make that big call. Yes, I agree. Defense definitely helped pave way for their offense, led by true freshman quarterback, who you'd never heard of, Tua Tegoveloa. And the defense provided him chances, and Tua converted. He played very well, and he ultimately led Alabama to a stunning overtime or overtime victory, and I could not believe what I had just seen. That last play, after he had been sacked for 16 yards, I thought the defense was going to take over and seal it for Georgia. Uh-uh, did not happen. That was that. That's all she wrote. Well, Ben, yeah. um, let's talk about the Rose Bowl this past month on New Year's Day was one of the most exciting college football games as well that I watched twice in the same week, two exciting games. Wow, it was quite a week, I must say. What are your thoughts on that game? Um, I didn't personally watch the game, but I, I, I mean, I heard the highlights and I was a little bit surprised on the outcome, but it, it, I heard that it was a good game. Yeah, well, defense and offense both played big roles in that game. Um, defense, Gave Georgia the momentum at times, OU the momentum at times. Each team, I believe, scored a defensive touchdown. Or I, yeah, I think that's right. Um, and in the end, it came down to defense as well. In the second overtime, OU's kick was blocked, and that's what set up the game-winning score for Georgia. Okay. Okay. And now, Bryce going to ask you about the Minneapolis miracle that happened this past month. What are your thoughts on that? I think that the Minneapolis miracle is going to be like, it's going to be remembered indefinitely. That was a perfect play for the Vikings and a terrible play for the Saints. The play call by Mike Zimmer is, was perfect. Give it to Stephon Diggs, and if he, and since he's such an athletic player, if he doesn't catch it, he'll likely get a foul. Close to the sideline, if he catches it, he'll get out of bounds. But neither of those things happen. Nothing happened like that. Their safety takes out the corner, and Stephon Diggs has gone for a touchdown and somehow gets both feet in. It was amazing. Yes, I would agree. That was one of the luckiest plays I've ever seen in my life. I couldn't believe how... The Saints' safety, Marcus Williams, missed the tackle. This is why I believe defense wins championships, because if he had made that tackle, the Saints would have won the game most likely. And 
the smallest plays like that can either prove to be costly for your team or they can save the day for you. And unfortunately for the Saints, that's what cost them the game and let Stephon Diggs walk away with a miraculous touchdown that will go down the record books one of the, as one of the greatest ever. That was a crazy game. It will never be forgotten. But I agree, defense does win championships. But also, offense looks pretty on the field. That was an amazing play, a perfect throw, great catch, great run. You agree with that? Of course. Case Keenum is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, Griff, mm -hmm. don't you think that maybe some of the reason that defense is emphasized is because offense is colorful, just like the play that we're talking about? And so, you know, sometimes fans, we have to motivate our fans, even in our long trail uh, basketball games um, where everybody's shouting defense, defense. You never have to motivate the crowd to shout offense, offense, because the offense is what gets people excited. It's like mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's why uh, maybe defense is in that sense Overrated. We're talking about defense precisely because it's natural to focus on the offense when you're at the game. I believe defense is underrated because it doesn't get as much attention as offense. As you said, as you stated, offense is colorful. The problem is, though, the reason why offense can't be trusted as well as defense is because defense is able to remain more consistent in late game situations. If you refer back to last year's Super Bowl, New England versus Atlanta, Falcons had a 25-point lead. They're up 28 to three. And then what happened? Well, not only did the Falcons just have a total collapse, an offensive meltdown, the Patriots' defense stepped up and forced fumbles from the Falcons, forced them into bad throws, forced them into bad decisions. Forced Ryan to take that sack where he got yes. out of field goal range. Uh-huh. That could have iced the game, and the Falcons could have gone up by 11 instead of 8. If you have an 8-point lead in football, the door is never closed, especially if you're facing Tom Brady. <sighs> Come on. I mean, once Julian Edelman made that diving catch around midfield, I had a feeling, okay, New England's going to win this game somehow. Had a sense. Well, anyways, Blake, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you about another college football New Year's Six Bowl that happened earlier, or last month. Um, the Fiesta Bowl, Penn State versus Washington. What would you say about that and how offense and defense played a big role in that game? Um, I think that since, since the offense, like, so what I believe is that the offense in that game really stepped up. So let's take the 92 yard uh, touchdown by Saquon Barkley mm -hmm. um, gave the team, of course, momentum and ended up, and Penn State actually ended up winning those games, but that, that game. So, anyway, the, so Washington kept, like, crawling back to, mm -hmm. like, they, it was touchdown after touchdown, so the score, I think, Ended up being something. I believe it was 35-28 Penn State. Yes. Correct. 35-28, yes. and it was just even though Washington kept fighting back, Penn State didn't like Penn State answered all they those. They would points. not go down. Trace yeah. McSorley and Saquon Barkley led the offense and kept marching down the field. Yes. They kept torching the Washington defense with big plays. Yeah. Saquon Barkley was just a beast on the field. Yeah. Yeah, he's going in the first round. Yeah. In the draft, he may be I think. going by more than the first round. You think it's a possibility he may be the first pick in the draft, which he could be. He could very well be. Yeah. Don't know. Very well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but that that game leads me to think that offense actually wins championships because the the offense kept pushing and pushing. Both both teams' offense kept pushing, and then it just ended up that. Penn State won by one touchdown. Yes, and that game was at one point a route. Penn State was up 28 to 7, I believe. Yes. And Washington kept climbing back. They had a big hole to dig themselves out of most of the game. 
it was an uphill battle, but in the end, Penn State struggled with something that they've been struggling with all year, closing games out. Mm -hmm. They missed a field goal, which gave Washington a chance. On that last play with the lateral, where I thought, I thought that the Washington receiver was going to take it to the house and score a touchdown. He oh. didn't, though, and he threw a backwards pass that was intercepted right, to, Brandon ultimately, Smith. to Brandon Smith, ultimately, which was a dumb decision. I couldn't believe he did that, but okay, Penn State won. Bet you're happy. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, offense, yes, it can carry your team, and certainly it can be re relied on easily, but in the end, they might get tired, or they might struggle to close the game out when it matters most. The pressure's on them. And another example about this would be earlier in the year against Ohio State. I'm sorry, I, don't, I know you don't like talking about this, Blake, but again, this is an incredible game. Um, Ohio State trailed the entire game until the very end when JT Barrett, quarterback, threw 16 straight completions. And that's just that's why defense needs to come up big in the end because your offense can't do it all and your defense needs to save the game for you especially when you have a hot hand at quarterback like JT Barrett you gotta stop them Bryce what are your thoughts on that game I think if a quarterback if a, if a defense allows a quarterback to get 16 completions in a row they shouldn't win the game they don't if, deserve it they don't deserve to win the game if they can't stop their quarterback 16 times in a row. That's, mm -hmm. that's outrageous. That's crazy. Well, yes, and this is where offense can be trusted more. If you have a hot hand at quarterback, sure, you can trust him all you like. Tom Brady has a knack for this. He has the most fourth quarter comebacks ever, I believe. Yeah. And like him, if, if there's a good relationship with the, the offensive coordinator, the coach, and the quarterback, offense can be trusted easily. Quarterback can always find a way to win. And this has been shown before in the Super Bowl, like last year, obviously. But also, defense, let's reference the point, Super Bowl 49, Seahawks versus Patriots, the last play. You thought that Seattle's offense was carrying momentum until Malcolm Butler made one of the most incredible interceptions ever. What do you think? That's right, but don't forget that what led to that interception was the call play by Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll's a head coach whom I admire a lot, uh, but instead of handing the ball off to Marshawn Lynch, who was just running roughshod, I over couldn't the page, believe they didn't hand it off to Marshawn Lynch. Right, well, right, guys. It's I one yard done to that. go, yeah. right. and you hand off the ball, and then we wouldn't really be talking about the Patriots' defense. Now, listen, the Patriots are extremely well coached. Uh, they anticipated the play. Butler was in exactly the right place at the right time. But I'm not sure I would use that as an example for defense over offense. I think there's a mistake where the offense didn't um, keep dancing with the one who brung you there. Uh -huh. Lynch, hand off the ball. Seattle wins. We'd be talking about offense right now. That's exactly, yeah, that's right. Um, but the thing with that game, Seattle was carrying the momentum, but then they just lost it. They didn't execute well. And this is where offense has problems. You can't always tr you can't always trust that you'll you'll score a touchdown. Right. An interception could happen like that. Very right. unlikely, but it happened that time. Um, and who knows? What if the Seahawks had handed off to Marshawn Lynch? What if he had fumbled? The guy never fumbles. If he had fumbled on that play, though. We'd all be saying, they should have thrown the ball. Russell Wilson had a hot hand. Right. He would have hit right. Ricardo Lockett right. in the end zone against a guy you've never heard of, Malcolm Butler. He would not have intercepted right. that. Right. That's, no way. That's the come it's so hard uh, to second guess no. in, in, in the moment. You know, if you, look at, if you look at the quarterbacks that were in the league finals just this year, okay, so Tom Brady can throw off all of our discussions. I think there's a good argument that Tom Brady may be the best team athlete uh, of any time in any sport. Uh, you can make your argument for Michael, I'd probably argue for Michael, but LeBron, you, that's, a, that's the next segment uh, of the show. Uh, but look at the other three quarterbacks in the league finals. Blake Bortles, Case Keenum, I know you're a fan of his, uh, I heard that, uh, but it's Case Keenum, Blake Bortles, and Nick Foles. 
Uh, and those are the teams that made it. So that's a pretty good argument that, in fact, you are right that defense uh, can take you a long way. Yeah, the Vikings have one of the top defenses in the league this year. Top yeah. defense in the league. The top defense, I believe. And the Jaguars, again, Saxonville. What's not to love about them? They had the, I think they were, they finished second in the NFL with 55 sacks. And they apparently have the best cornerback in the game, as he calls himself, Jalen <laughs> Ramsey. Defense does win these days, and it helps inexperienced quarterbacks like Bortles, Foles, and Keenum. The Patriots do well on both offense and defense. They just do their job. As Bill Belichick says, just do your job. Right. And they do it only right. one way, the Patriot way. Right. Um, ben, yeah. go back to you. Um, speaking of the Patriots, big game this weekend. Who do you have in Super Bowl 52, mm -hmm. Eagles or Patriots? Oh, definitely the Patriots. They are much, um, I think their coaching staff is much more, uh, they're just more intelligent about their game. And I think Tom Brady, he knows how to throw in the pocket. He's an, like an overall just great player and a great QB. And I definitely think he will carry them to uh, the win. I'm guessing you would consider him the GOAT? Yeah, definitely. Greatest of all time? Definitely. All right. I think Six that the Super Patriots Bowls are going to win because Tom Brady can never get sacked. He's, I can't stand watching him. He's got the <laughs> offensive line that helps him with that, right? I cannot, I can't think of a time when Tom Brady's been sacked. I watch almost every Patriots game still. The reason that our offense was so bad against the Eagle, the, the Eagles. The Vikings was, offense was so bad against the Eagles, cause like Chris Long, every we had no time. He, he there was a tip ball that was in an interception for a pick six, and he ha and he fumbled. So I don't think that the pressure on Tom Brady is gonna do anything. So that's why the Patriots are gonna win the Super Bowl. He's a five-time Super Bowl champion. He's hard to beat, obviously. We'll see if he gets ring number six. How about you, Blake? I was, at the beginning of this year, I, or obviously, I didn't think the Eagles at the beginning of the year, but. I did not think so either. <laughs> Mid-season, mm -hmm. Carson Wentz was just tearing teams up. It was, yeah. and then he got injured. Oh and, yeah, I thought the Eagles were done when Carson Wentz tore his ACL yeah. in League 14 yeah. against the Los Angeles Rams. I thought, Nick Foles, seriously? Oh. What experience does that guy have? I mean, he did he throw seven in touchdowns in a game once, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, really, though, I thought they had no chance, but their defense stepped up and helped Nick Foles, and the team is doing pretty well, and I think they're going to carry that momentum into Minneapolis, and I'm going with the Eagles in the Super Bowl for the first time in franchise history. None of you guys have picked them yet, but I'm going with the Eagles. How about you, Seth? Well, I got to tell you, I've been a Jets fan for 20 years. Uh, I've, oh, that's tough. Sorry. You know, yeah. Rooted against Tom Brady for 20 years. Tom Brady has won uh, for 20 years. I'm just constitutionally unable to pick the Patriots. I do think in a team sport like football, uh, momentum does make a difference. I'm going with you, Griff, and I'm going to side with you on the Eagles. 24-21. 24-21. All right. 21 Prediction for scores. All right, I'm going to go with 26-24 Eagles. How about you, Bryce? I think it's going to be 35-28 Patriots. All right. And I'm not saying I'd like the Patriots to win. I just I can't see the Eagles taking them down. All right. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, let's go with... I feel like... If, if the Patriots win, they're going to win big. Yeah. But if mm -hmm. it's a close game, I think I – th I still think the Patriots. <laughs> yeah. Because, like you said earlier, the two, uh, like, crazy games, the Patriots, Seahawks, and this year's – or last year's, the Falcons, Patriots. Patriots both have come close to losing the Super Bowls. I mean, if you think about it, they're close to being – 0-7 oh, in all their Super Bowls played under Belichick mm -hmm. and Brady. All of them have been decided by one touchdown or less. Yeah. And you never know what could happen. I think it'll be a close game. So mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with 
32-31, all right. Ooh. Only one okay. Super Bowl ever has been decided by one point. That was the Giants versus Bills in the early 90s when Scott Norwood, Norwide, missed a kick. <laughs> My dad still right. talks about that. He's still right. angry. Well, all yeah, right. I think it was wide left. Yeah. Well, and Ben, to yeah. close, what is your score for the Super Bowl? Um, I, <clears throat> I think the Patriots offense can accomplish great things, and, and I, I, I'm not totally confident that the Eagles' defense will be able to contain uh, them. So I would probably say maybe like, like 24-30. 24-30, all right, another close game. Well, the Super Bowl is in four days from now. I can't wait to find out how it all goes down. Thank you for watching Sportshire. See you in a month.